one more minute and then I'm giving up. Yeah, you got it. After safely making it back to the Gold Coast, we got stuck straight into work. Leaving about a five centimeter overlap, I cut the aluminium window holes out. And attached the reveals to the windows. The window reveals are attached to the studs with screws. The whole window is sicker in, and there's also about a hundred roofing screws attached to it. is totally in. Looks pretty sick. So our bed height is going to be about here. Um, yeah, so that's going to be pretty cool. So this is going to be the view from about head height. And the idea is to be able to see as many stars as possible whilst we're sleeping. So to be sleeping under the stars every night, yeah, should be pretty cool. Pretty excited. We laid marine carpet down on the garage floor, placed ply over the supports, and placed the studs over the top of the ply on the supports. And the ply is screwed to the studs from underneath in the garage. Eating brownie. Just putting some insulation down and then the boards on top, fix that in place, and half the floor is done. We cut the insulation to size and placed it in between the studs. All our insulation is earth wool. We then place pre-cut ply over the top and screwed it all into place. Just give you a rundown of the few little things that have happened. Um, so, fresh water tank fully installed now, not plumbed yet. Um, and we got the uh, we got the, all the wheels and uh, rims replaced uh, with these big fatty bombardies. Uh, 395-85R20s, whatever that means. Uh, we are going to be filing down a bit of the, uh, the pan here, just so um, the big bad boy tyres, i.e. this one, uh, doesn't rub as, it's, as they're driving along. So Matt, uh, Beck's brother, Matt's over from New Zealand and uh, we put him to work straight away. Um, he was pretty, pretty happy to give us a hand, but we've got to take this, we've got to take this battery box off because this is way too close. The, the whole thing actually flexes, so we need about uh, five, 10 centimeter gap so that just doesn't break that apart. So what we're gonna do is take this whole box off and then move it down about five, ten centimeters. And uh, this is Matt. <laughs> well, Christmas is over, and today. is actually New Year's Eve. We've just come back from camping for four days. Got our mattress there, Bex and I were there, niece was there, nephew was under here on a bit of wood and blow up mattress, and it was sweet as. Um, windows, house windows, didn't bust out. Went over some full, small full driving tracks, light, extremely light full driving. Everything went sweet as. Um, yeah, no problems whatsoever. 
Oh, any electricals? Um, uh, this is just coming down from the solar panels. I've labeled them positive, negative. Um, I'm going to have an inlet from shore power down here. I'm also going to have an outdoor outlet there. Um, so basically, the 240 volt has to run from there up and over to um, the brains. And then as far as the 240 out is concerned, it needs to come out back down to there, um, which is the outdoor outlet over to here, which is a, um, which is four, four outlets for the entertainment unit. And then one over there, um, which is just a one, one socket outlet. Uh, there is also going to be another cable running all the way to the top there that is only going to be connected to shore power so it'll never be able to run off off um, all the electrics and the and the solar setup inside here um, so that's just future proofing it if someone wants a air conditioner or if we find we want an air conditioner but I don't really plan on putting one in another cable down the right hand side and it's going to come down here there's going to be two sockets in the kitchen um, there's also going to be two sockets in a charge drawer that we're going to have. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for 240 volt. Running the DC wiring is extremely tedious and we had many, many, many runs back to the shop to get more. It's pretty expensive considering you need to be running one wire for almost every appliance. This took us about two days to complete. I welded a small bracket for the water inlet valve and attached it to the side of the truck. We also attached all the tank fittings. So this here is where the water comes in from the mains and so if we're just using mains here for a camping ground it will come this way and bypass the pump because it'll have enough pressure to go to the rest of the house um, and if we are wanting to fill up our tank the water will come in, it'll go through this one way valve so we can switch that on and off, um, come through, fill up the tank and then from the tank it comes through here. So this one-way valve, if we if we are connected to mains for a long time, then you shut off this because the tank's got a breather and if you don't shut off that, it's going to fill up the tank and just keep on pissing out the top. So the idea of this valve is to, if we're connected for a long time, shut that off so we can keep the hose connected and that just feeds our, um, our whole plumbing circuit and bypasses the pump and the tank all together. So when the water comes from the tank, you have to put it through a filter and that just protects the pump. So you don't want, say you're filling up from water somewhere in the outback, you don't want dust and stuff from the tank then going through the pump. So from the pump, it comes back in and then from here, um, this goes to the house. So it'll go to the hot water unit, and our hot water will branch off from there um, and to our sink, shower and feet washer. Or jaxi tap. Oh. <laughs> feet washer. To the feet washer. Yeah, so we've also got a little breather valve up here with net that uh, Bex is cable tied. So to stop any little critters getting in mainly. And, um, and large bits of dust. And somewhere on the side here, uh, next to our um, front door, we're gonna have just a little tap, just a little tap to hose off if you wanna have a, if you want a quick outdoor shower or just wash your sand off your feet before you go inside. <laughs> we're recording, we're good. Um, so we wanted to talk a little bit more about the house windows. Um, we had the windows made custom, except for the kitchen window, um, because we wanted a really specific size. We had three criteria for the windows. We wanted them to look like a house. We didn't want it to, them to look like 
a caravan um, we wanted them to be big so that we could get maximum view maximum light um, and we wanted them to be double glazed so that the house is really really warm that was one of the things that we really wanted for the house so it was real cozy and on the inside yeah yeah and the windows are awesome they um i had some concerns whether they were going to just explode and, and die um, well, while we're driving not just while we're sitting having dinner all the time <laughs> <laughs> And none of that's happened. Um, they are they are double glaze, so I guess they work better than single glaze. We get a little bit of condensation on the aluminium if we don't turn the fan on at night, but we always have the fan on at night for um, for airflow. So if I guess if you wanted to go even more hardcore, if you're in an even colder environment, you could probably look at the you've got insulation in between the inside and the outside aluminium, um, which would give you a lot better insulation. Um, but apart from mm. that, they're awesome. We love them. And the concertina window is our favourite feature of the house. For sure. What else did we do? Oh, you boop, can boop, see boop, me boop, doing. Boop, 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 boop. You, you can see me doing the insulation. Um, I learnt the hard way. I'm wearing singlet and shorts, and I think I might have some gloves on. Um, when you're doing insulation, wear gloves, wear a face mask, wear long sleeves. Um, it's horrible stuff we we try to do our very best job with it with the insulation so no holes no gaps the floors the ceilings the walls everything is insulated so this truck is toasty yep yep always wear the right ppe uh learned that the hard way with a bit of rusty steel in my eyeball um but yeah ppe i and swear the, the, i had fiberglass in my lungs like if i the think fiber <coughs> The, the fiberglass wasn't too bad for me because I've got hair all over my body and so I guess that helped um, but Bex, yeah, Bex found it really hard. Uh, what else do we do? Oh yeah, yeah, on um, Christmas Day actually, T1 was building, um, it was, we had a small window to get the truck ready before we took him away camping um, and we wanted to get as much done as possible. We were working so hard and it's really hard to build while we're working so we had a holiday to build and T1 was out there on Christmas Day. I'm like, come in and get your, your Christmas dinner. And he's like, five more minutes. I'm like, no, come now. These bugs will not last. Bugs. Um, yeah. Um, so I had my family over from New Zealand, which was awesome. Um, you see my brother Matt helping out, um, which was awesome. Thank you so much, Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. And my mum um, just trying to feed us. Thanks, Marie. Yeah, she was always trying to help as well, but I just didn't really have anything that I could get her to do. But she was offering all the time which was amazing <laughs> <laughs> and while we're thanking people we really need to thank Timon's parents because all the time did we do that last video or did we just record it i, I can't we remember it. we just recorded it um every single time we park our big dirty truck in their really nice front driveway we take over their garage their house and turn it into a construction site put them to work um, and put just, my dad to work oh. my dad's always offering to if i ever need him to give me a hand He's just straight there, um, and yeah, we've done some pretty big days as well that we put in. I felt really bad, um, and Your my mum just cooking does so much. To bunnies yeah, for us. if I'm if I'm in a tight spot, and Bex is off doing something, she's done a couple of bunnings runs. So and she has a very good eye for design, so she's helped us pick out a few of the things. Yeah, and she's inside. an amazing cook as well, uh, and home cook food is so good <laughs> <laughs> so good so thank you so much mm -hmm. so 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 much um one other thing we sort of did in this last video was we um just started the electricals we got most of the, uh, the wiring in here's just a little hot tip that we have r sort of run into um if you're going to be running a heater or something like that from your camper van you want to have an extra point attached you want to have an extra socket inside your motorhome that will just run off outside power so let me give you a little bit of backstory we've got a heater inside here and so during the winter instead of installing a diesel heater we've just got a normal heater and we usually just stay at campgrounds but it if the power goes out from the campground, that heat is pulling a lot of power and that will suck our batteries dry in a couple of hours, um, maybe like five hours or something like that, which is gonna be really bad for the batteries. We've mm. managed to 
get out of that situation a couple of times, but we've almost been caught out. So if you actually plan to run something that's high power, um, yeah, just have a think about that. Think about it only coming from an outlet that is fed from the grid and not fed from your batteries, a designated sort of one. Um, yeah, I know most caravans and stuff do that nowadays, like if the power goes out, the air conditioning just sort of goes off and stuff like that, so they can't drain your batteries. But something to think about. Um, we're going to leave you with some footage of what we've done this week. We did some pretty cool stuff, and now that we've essentially got most of our week off, like I'm editing one one episode, usually takes me about two days at the moment to edit, so... Out of seven days we've got off, we've got about five days to play and so we're just going to leave you with some footage. We've been running around Ulladulla doing all sorts of stuff and it's been really fun. And it's um, so exciting to be able to do fun things because for so long we've done two weeks of really hard work. Yep. Make yeah, money. at least 10 hour days, 14 days straight. The huge days. And then we on our week off, Timon and well, me to a lesser extent have been building so... Timon hasn't had a week off in such a long time and now that we've finally finished the truck, um, we can enjoy our weeks off. Yeah, so we are just maxing them out, maxing adventures. Yeah, and... making up for lost time because yeah. we like doing fun shit and we haven't done anything for about two years. So. And COVID is on so we can't travel overseas and we've got this amazing rig so we take it cool places and do fun things with it. Yeah, check it out. <laughs> clean run up the rocks. Where are you going? Paper boy, riding your bike today. Not a care in the world, throwing your paper through. 